Right, this video is about Gauss's law. And Gauss's law says that the integral of the electric field, which is E, through a closed area, which is our A, is equal to the total charge inside of the area. So this is Q inside, divided by EO, which is the constant called the permittivity of free space, and shows up all over physics. What this equation means is that you can take any closed surface you like and find the electric field going through it. So you can find the E, provided you can do the math. Usually you can't. However, there are a number of cases when it's nice and easy. Cases where the electric field is coming straight out through the surface evenly. And these are, for example, a spherical surface around a point or sphere. A cylindrical surface around an infinite wire or a regular surface over a section of an indefinite plane. These are the Gaussian surfaces. Basically, with these surfaces, all you're trying to do is make life easier. You just make sure that the surface is always the same distance from the charge source and that the field is always going through at 90 degrees. You can then work out the integral with your eyes closed. It's that easy. The left-hand side of Gauss's law becomes E times the surface area of the shape you choose. So for, a spherical so for a spherical surface around a point or sphere, the this, this surface becomes pi r squared e, where r is the radius of the sphere. For the cylindrical surface around an infinite wire, it's pi r l e, where l and r are the length and radius of the cylinder. And a regular surface becomes a e, where, it's the, where a is the area above and below the infinite surface. You need the factor of 2 as the field goes above and below the surface at 90 degrees. In doing some more math, we have an equation for an infinite line of charge. Now in this equation, something new has been introduced, lambda. If you have an infinite line of charge, then the total charge on it is infinite, and there is no way of knowing how much of that infinite charge you would have inside your Gaussian surface. That's where lambda comes in. It's the value of charge per unit of length. So lambda is just a value of charge. And then lastly, um, for an infinite surface, Gauss's law becomes this equation. Once again, a new symbol has been added just like the one before. This is just a charge per unit area. So once again, it's just a way to give a value of charge.